welcome back to my channel. It's Lex. I am here today to share with you guys my laundry room makeover. The laundry room is always a space that I tend to neglect, but honestly, it's a room I probably need to put a lot more effort into because I hate doing laundry, y'all. Like, ugh, it's so bad. It's so bad. So I'm hoping that if I make the room look more aesthetically pleasing, maybe I'll do laundry more. Or maybe I'm lying to myself. I don't really know but we're gonna do it anyways. So I'm gonna show you guys some pictures of my design aesthetic, my design inspiration. All of these photos are from my Pinterest board, which I will link down below. It is DIY Diaries by Lex. And as you can see, I'm going for a faux brick, either German schmear or whitewash brick accent wall with some wood accents, some black metal accents. It's really farmhouse, but still a little industrial. I even want a feature door. So I've been pinning these doors for pantries and for laundry rooms and I am giving myself one of these doors for the laundry room. About a week ago my mom and I went to Marietta Reclamation to look at salvage doors for this this feature door um, and it was so bomb. If you live in the Atlanta area and you're looking for salvage parts it is an awesome place to go. Um, I have some footage that I'm going to show you guys so let's roll the clips. So although the doors at Marietta Reclamation were awesome, um, as you can see, like a couple of them were in really, really good condition. I was really happy with what she had selection wise, but I do not want to reframe my door. I'm not taking down any of the framing. This house is brand new. Everything's pristine. It's in great condition. I'm not taking down the door frame to change the size of the door. So I needed something that fit my dimensions almost exactly. Um, and she did have four doors. But because she had already started the finishing process on two of them, they had been painted and stained and, and all that good stuff. So the price reflected that. Um, the price still wasn't bad. $375 for finished doors that are like salvage or vintage is still really good. But I wanted the opportunity to be able to adjust the door to my liking and to my style. So I didn't want to pay $400 for a door that I was just going to paint over, right? She did have one door that she had not yet finished that she was willing to sell to me, but it was slightly too small. So yes, I am still gonna keep in touch with her because I know I'm gonna wanna buy a vintage door for our pantry when we do the kitchen later down the line. But I do wanna show you guys the door that I found on Facebook Marketplace. This door was a hundred bucks. I found two doors. Um, the first guy said he would sell me uh, the door. It looked a lot like what I saw at Marietta Reclamation. He was gonna sell it to me for 125 and then he fell off the face of the earth. I hope he's okay. Anyways, couldn't get that door, even though I would have loved it. I'll show you a picture of it up here. But couldn't get that door, went back to the drawing board, found this door around the corner for me. Hasn't ever been used. It doesn't even have the actual hole drilled in the door for the knob yet. Here's a quick peek into my laundry room. It is quite a mess. You can see up here, I've got toilet tissue. I've got paper towels. These are for all places in the house, really. I store everything in here. The washing supplies are up there. This is a random box of stuff from my last laundry room right here that has not been unpacked. This is like one of the last boxes in the house that hasn't been unpacked as far as I know. We've got a GE washer and I think a GE dryer. The dryer is old AF um, and the washer is pretty much new. It's only a year old. There is a little corner here, but apart from that, this wall behind the door has our, our, uh, wiring for the cable internet and the security system so this wall is pretty much not usable it's behind the door so that's fine but if you look you can see that there's still some space between the washer and dryer so i might want to build something to kind of go in between there that can be useful for storage i want to take out this particular wire rack and put in some wooden shelves that can be used for storage it'll be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing 
Let's go ahead and get the laundry room cleaned out and get it ready for this transformation. Okay, so it's now several hours later. I waited for this bathroom to dry. I sanded it down. I cleaned up the dust with the vacuum cleaner. And now I am ready to paint the three walls in this space that will be white. These are the two paint colors I selected. This one is White Core by Sherwin Williams. And this one is icy breeze this one didn't look this blue in the store which is why i'm glad i brought um i bought samples but yeah clearly wasn't going for blue it's going for a neutral toned white so white core it is It is after midnight, I am exhausted, but the walls are painted and the ceiling's painted, so I'm feeling accomplished. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow, work throughout the day, and then touch up the corners, give this wall a second coat of paint, and then start on the brick panels. I will see y'all tomorrow, bye. So the next day I applied the second coat to the walls. I always do the corners first and then go back in and fill in the walls. I did every wall except for the accent wall and the ceiling. I wanted to make sure it had a chance to dry overnight so I wouldn't be transferring paint when we went to install the panels the next day. Speaking of the panels, the panel process is one that's really, it's not hard. It can be a little tedious, especially if you have a lot of cutouts for plugins and different piping in the wall like we did in our laundry room. But if you don't, it's pretty easy. What I learned from this project is just measure, 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 then cut. I measured at least 20 times before I cut anything. And that's particularly true if you only buy enough to do your wall. If you don't wanna to have to go buy some extra product, um, which we could, but we just didn't for this project. So I wanted to make sure that I measured once or measured twice, cut once. So I'll put up a little diagram here that shows you our wall with the measurements between each of these cutouts. It was so important to have these measurements well ahead of time. I remeasured a couple times even during the process to make sure my measurements were correct because I did some addition and subtraction to figure out where each panel fit on the wall to transfer the cutouts and the shapes onto the panels without being in the laundry room for the cutting process. For me, the easiest way to do this is to use tape, get your measurements down, make sure you're good, and then once your measurements are down, transfer them to your panels. I would strongly recommend it especially if this is your first time doing something like this it definitely was mine but i didn't make any major errors and was able to get my cuts right the first time just measuring really well and using tape i also used a speed square to make sure that all of the 90 degree angles were right because the builders definitely did their job so it should be easier for me in that case some walls and houses are not even so just make sure you're checking and measuring all the way along your wall to be sure that you're getting an accurate measurement. Also, I recommend you use tape just to prevent chip out. No matter what blade you use, you can kind of get some chipping issues. So tape really helps prevent that. So it it's, kills two birds with one stone. We decided to combine the two top panels with a puzzle piece design so that you couldn't see the straight line running down the panel. I saw the Latina next door do her panels this way. 
Um, I think she did hers a tiny bit differently from the way that my husband and I did ours, but we just cut a literal puzzle piece to fit the other. It did require us to cut further into the second panel that was going up on the wall, so you have to keep that in mind. It will take away more panel from the wall. The reason we elected to use the puzzle piece pattern was because we thought it would give us a better seam during the installation process when we were applying our spackling. I don't necessarily know that that was true now, but we did do that um, in retrospect. I may not do it again, but I definitely think that that seam you have when it creates a straight line between the two panels is very noticeable. And with the other panels at the bottom, we decided not to do the puzzle piece technique because there were so many cutouts. Um, and I could very clearly see the seam at that point. So there are ways to hide the seam. That's why we did the, sh the schmear technique and that definitely hit the seams and it looked so good. To cut these panels, our primary tool was a jigsaw. We did most of our cuts, even the zigzag puzzle piece cuts. With the jigsaw tool, it was super easy. Um, I've never used a jigsaw before. It's pretty user friendly if you haven't. For any straight cuts, we used our circular saw just because that's a little bit easier, I guess, to go in a straight line. And then when it came to the cutouts, we actually used a drill bit in our power drill to do a pilot hole in each of the corners before we made any cuts. And that allowed us to slip the jigsaw into the pilot hole and then start the cut. It's a whole lot easier than trying to dig a jigsaw into a closed space. I just wasn't comfortable doing it. So pilot holes with the drill it was, and I can work a drill, okay? Installing the panels was a breeze. All we used were two inch brad nails and a brad nailer. We have one that we use, it's attached to our air compressor. It was easy breezy. You did need to use the studs to secure it. The two inch brad nails did a great job. We also didn't use any drywall anchors, any finishing nails, anything like that you're welcome to use whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. Once we had all the panels cut, we took them upstairs to dry fit them. This is a really important step. You wanna dry fit them all before you put away your saws and commit yourself to believing you're done. There's nothing worse than thinking you're done and you're not. So we dry fit all the pieces. We did have one fit issue with the top puzzle panels fitting together. All of the corners were square, so there was no problems there, but we just had to cut a little bit more to make those puzzle pieces fit together. Once we had that, we were rolling, and it was so quick. I mean, in a matter of minutes, we have all four panels put up on the wall. We did have to come back and cut a little bit off of one of the panels for one of the cutouts to fit properly with its framing, but other than that, it was an easy process. It was really quick, and I definitely think it was worth it for for the outcome that we have. Once the paneling was all up and complete, I decided to paint the grout. Don't ask me why, I just thought that it would look better if most of that black was concealed before I went in to do the German schmear, the schmear technique. In retrospect, probably didn't need to do all of that, wouldn't do it again, so uh, disregard that. But after that, I started the schmearing process. I used plain old vinyl spackling, nothing fancy about it. I will say in retrospect, I might have used a different spackling that dried cl closer to white in color. This stuff dried off-white and I wasn't a fan of the color it dried and I didn't really have the intention of painting it, but I had to because of that. Other than that, the vinyl spackling is really smooth. It's easy to work with. It's inexpensive. I think we used four 32 ounce tubes of Final spackling, I got mine from Lowe's, it was like six or seven bucks. And yeah, it was pretty easy. There's a couple of techniques on how to schmear. I have a IGTV video with how I did some schmearing on my Instagram, if you wanna check out that, it is the official DIY Diaries. But other than that, you can just watch me schmear away. So I wanted to show you what I was doing to fix that huge gap in the wall from 
where I had actually was unable to cut in a straight line for reasons that are unknown to me. But I filled it in with putty. I know you're supposed to layer this and let it dry. I'm not doing all of that because I'm not really concerned about this being structurally sound. I'm not going to secure anything to this portion of the wall. But to get it to have this smooth look that it has here, and I'll kind of pan down so you can see it. So if you look right here, you can see some of the gapping in here. I'm going to go in and fix primarily that spot right there. So it gives you the same look that you see lower down here. For most of the wall, I'm using this medium sized putty knife, but for like specific areas that I need to touch up or where I need to do some detail work, I'm gonna go in with this smaller putty knife here. These came in a pack of three. I think I got them from Home Depot or from Lowe's. Yeah, I got these from Lowe's. So I'm gonna use this one for this. I'm gonna start with about that much on my knife. And I'm going to try to get into the angle as best as I can on the, with the flat surface. And then I'm going to go in and pull from here this way to help smooth. I'm going to go back and forth until I get the product into that space. I think this space just needs a lot of product, so I'm going to keep building it until I put it in. And I'm adding more and more each time. It is a little sticky, so some of it is sticking to the knife. So that's what I have on there. It looks crazy now, but no worries. I'm gonna take most of the putty off of the knife. So I'm gonna scrape off the excess so the putty knife is clean. I'm gonna go in against flat against the wall and push any of the excess product closer to where I want this product to end, so there's no excess on the wall. I'm gonna clean off my putty knife again, and I'm just cleaning it off on the side of this bottle that I'm using. I'm just holding it like a thug. And then I'm gonna go in with a putty knife at like a, I guess you'd say this is like a 15 degree angle. That's 45, yeah, like 15, 20 degree angle. And I'm just gonna go straight down. And I did pick up quite a bit of product. I'm not going to do a whole bunch of like smearing just because I want the product to be stable. Like I said, it's going to take quite a bit of time to dry. So I'm just going to kind of come in at an angle. To try to make that look as natural along that space as as it can, but I don't want to do a whole lot more than that and disrupt the, the product too much. I'm using very light pressure. And that is all that I did to fix that space in the wall where the hole was. Um, there is a little gapping above it, but you won't really even notice it now. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. So what I'm doing right now is just kind of stepping back and looking at places, seeing where my eye gravitates, if there's anything that I want to change or add more to, because there's really no taking away at this point. I definitely see a few places and I definitely have added more spackling in certain places, but um, what I'm focusing on right now is this upper corner up here. And I've already done, redone the middle part right here and I think it looks a lot better. You really can't tell where the seam was and what I've noticed really helps is making sure that things are asymmetrical, that they don't match very well and that you, you don't follow the same pattern too often with how you apply your spackling. I did outline the edge of the wall just because I thought a clean line would look best and I started doing that over on this end as well 
which I will continue to do here in a little bit. I didn't pay too much attention to the area near the baseboard because no one will literally ever see it. And this section all here and here is going behind the washer and dryer. You won't see that area either. So it's really been the main spot for practicing. What I'm going to do is show you kind of the techniques I figured out throughout this process on this blank canvas that's left over here. I'll show you what I've been doing, show you some tricks, and then you can just watch me finish the wall. So quick update before we keep going in this laundry room makeover process. I wanted to show you guys what the wall looked like before we started adding shelves and all that good stuff. Basically, it looks bomb. It looks so good. I'm so happy with the way it came out. Um, some of this was an accident. A lot of this was an accident, but I'm really glad that it came out the way that it did. Just to catch you up, on what happened after we finished the vinyl spackling I went back in chipped off some in some areas let it dry overnight came back the next morning and it looked like this which was way too peachy orange for me I'm guessing it's the red from the brick shining through the vinyl spackling that made it that color so then I decided to paint it which is how we got to where it is today and I love it I love that some of the darker tones show through and it gives you an almost black blue look. And yeah, that Wabi Sabi is all good over here. We love Wabi Sabi on, on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching part one of this makeover. Part two is coming with all of the decor, the floating shelves, and all of the other additions I made to my new laundry room. I love it and I know you're going to love it too, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and comment down below and let me know if this is a technique you try in your laundry room. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.